Good morning and welcome to our webinar. More than 10 years ago, Blue Intelligence introduced DocuPerformer to address the pain of manual documentation in SAP BW. However, at that time, documentation was not the only time-consuming topic for our customers. It became quite clear to us that they were also struggling with reoccurring analysis tasks in their day-to-day -day work with their SAP systems. Since SAP did not really provide the right tools to deal with these issues, we introduced a bundle of analysis functions to DocuPerformer, which are offering support for these reoccurring tasks. Today we will be talking about the highlights of these analysis features and I will also provide you with possible use cases where you can address certain analysis tasks especially. First of all, for which SAP components are we offering the analysis support? As you can see, the analysis module is working across system components. So we support SAP BW, SAP BO, HANA, and also BPC. And as you can see in the details, we are offering the analysis for a variety of object types, which you will see soon. Let's first of all talk about how to get an overview into complex data models and objects. Huge data models can get complex quite fast. To get and keep an overview of these models can be very challenging with the standard functionalities in SAP. The data flow analysis in DocuPerformer, however, is supporting you in handling these complex data flows. It offers a comprehensive overview regarding your data flows and objects and gives you a better understanding of the interdependencies between these objects. You can extend data flows via certain objects, for example, queries or BO objects, and you can also do certain operations like DTP and lookup scans, which I will so show you soon. We are offering the data flow analysis for the following object types. So you can see we provide multi-providers and composite providers, info sets, characteristics, and so on. This is a good mixer. So you see we are also supporting the data flow analysis for old object types, but also for the new BW for HANA object types. How does it work? Well, basically you use our entity grid to search for the object which, for which you want to see the data flow. You select the context menu and select display data flow. Then you will get the option if you want to have the data flow visible as a network view or a tree view, if you want the offline version or even the online version and so on. Let me show you how this works in DocuPerformer. Therefore, I open the application quickly. Here you can see that I've already opened my entity grid. And what you would do now is you would search for the object for which you would like to analyze the data flow. In this case, I will choose a multi-provider for which I would like to see how the data model below looks like. As you can see, I already prepared here something for the webinar, so I'm simply gonna open it. First of all, you can see that you have a structured view of the complete data model below the multi-provider. So you have all the layers which you would expect to see to have a complete overview. Furthermore, you have now the option here in the toolbar to execute certain operations. Let's, for example, show you how the ABAP lookup scan looks like. Therefore, I click here show and high results for ABAP scan results because I prepared the scan already before this webinar. And as you can see, the transformations expand and give you the full detail of where information is read from other places like DSOs or master data and what kind of lookup operation it is. So we are considering select statements and routines. We are considering includes, function modules, but also methods and nested lookups in other programs. This gives you an insight from which objects and places data is read beside this complete data model to give you an even more completed picture to the full extent. Okay, the next analysis I would like to show you is the DTP scan. So you have the option again to start a DTP and info package scan up here in the toolbar. The results of this scan can show you where in the data flow data is filtered. So for example, here in this transformation, you can see that there is a DTP with a filter on the object BBP origin or BBP popo. 
This is not only working for data transfer processes, but also for info packages. So let's go down to the info sources and check what kind of filters we have here. And here you can see, oh yes, there is some filter here, for example, with a variable. Okay, so it's not only possible to view the data model with all its respective uh, objects, but you can al already start the first analysis to uh, get an insight of what the data model looks like. This can, for example, be helpful. Imagine the situation, you're a new employer or you're a consultant at a new company and you get uh, the responsibility to take care of a certain data model. This data model is huge and you don't want to click through all the transformations to get an insight of how the data model is working or the data flow. So Tokyo Performer is the perfect entry point to get a first glance of what it looks like. This is of course not the complete picture. What you can actually see is that there, the reporting elements like queries or BO objects is missing. But this is no issue. As you can see here, there is an option to display all the queries which are based on this multi-provider. So here I've got a selection of all the queries based on the multi-provider and even the BO objects. Let me, for example, select one of these queries to show you how this looks in the picture. The tool is now selecting the query and also displaying all dependent BO objects to this query, which is quite nice because now you have the data model and cross application objects, which are also depending here. So you get even a fuller picture of what the complete data model is about. Okay, if this might be too much information to focus, we also offer you the possibility to deselect certain parts of the data flow. So you could, for example, say, I'm not really interested into the right part of this data flow. Let's, for example, say you are not very interested in what's ever below InfoCube RSRB000. No problem. With the context menu, you can, you can simply exclude this branch from the complete data model view. Okay, to get an even more structured view, I will now show you what else you can do. You can assign objects to layers. As you can see, I already prepared some assignments here. So all the data sources belong to the data source layer, all the DSOs on this level belong to the acquisition layer, and these here, for example, to the propagation layer. You can simply select an object and assign it to a layer which you defined, following the layered um, scalable architecture, of course. So let's, for example, say this is the virtualization layer, and you can see the object is immediately added and visually highlighted belonging to this layer. Okay. Now let's say you got a good overview of this data model, but now you want to have a deeper look into single objects. Therefore, I will include one, uh, one more time the query above the multi-provider, and I will show you how you can jump into single objects to analyze them further. With the context menu on the query, I can simply say, Analyze and show me, please, the analysis of this object. The Doki Performer is now selecting all the technical details of this query, for example, and is listing it in a structured way. So you can see the filters used in the query. You can see the sheet definition with its three characteristics, rows, columns, the key figures, and also the variables. But this is not all. If I extend to the lowest level, I can even see the formulas of calculated key figures. So you easily get a first insight of a single object at one glance by a simple uh, click. From here on, it's also possible to compare this object to other systems. If you have, for example, a free system landscape with a development system and test system and productive system, you could now be uh, selecting here the system which you would like to compare this object to. In case there is a difference between the productive state of this object and the development state of this object. Okay. Let's go back to the presentation for now. So. What you just saw was, of course, a data model in BW, but this is not the only thing we support. 
So with Docker Performer, it's also possible to have the same view on HANA entities like calculation views. So here you would see all dependent objects of the calculation view down to the lowest tables. And also this is possible for ABAP CDS data definitions. Even here you can structure the objects with a layered structure and you can do analysis as you are used to from BW. The object analysis which you just saw for the query is also of course possible for other objects in BW but also possible for objects in BO or in HANA. Okay, that's it about getting an overview into complex data models. Let's now talk about impact and mapping analysis. Mapping analysis functions in DocuPerformer help you to understand where certain information comes from and how information is processed in the data flow. Results of the mapping analysis can, for example, help to answer the following questions. Where does my data come from? Where in the data flow are changes to the data happening? Why do certain values not match the expected in the reporting layer? Are filters applied to my data somewhere? Impact analysis, on the other hand, are used to understand the impact of changes which you are doing to objects. Imagine, for example, you have a change request coming from business, which includes a change of a critical, very central object in your SAP VW. Here, before you take any actions, you would like to get the clear, full picture which other objects are depending on this change. Let me show you how this can look like in DocuPerformer. So first of all, I would like to show you how the mapping analysis in DocuPerformer can look like. Therefore, I will open again a data model of a HANA composite provider. And now I will jump to the tree view of this data model. And in the tree view, I have the option to execute a mapping analysis of an info object of this composite provider. So I click on mapping analysis and I get a full list of dimensions and key figures which are included in this composite provider. Let's for now maybe focus on the key figure zero order value. Imagine, for example, the use case that a business employer came with the approach to you that he has the feeling that the key figure is not correct in the reporting and he would like to understand from which source this key figure is delivered and how it is mapped through the data model below the query. So now I will select this key figure and I will start the mapping analysis down to the data source by clicking Start. On the right hand side, you can see the results of this analysis. And you can see I have mappings here, here and here. So it seems that the information of this key figure is coming from just one single data source, which is to LIS02SCL in the source system T90. First of all, it comes from the a field in the data source BWEFFWR and it's mapped to the info object zero order value. Then there is another direct assignment here in this transformation, and we have a third direct assignment with the aggregation sum in the last transformation up to the propagation layer in con for contract management. And this is where the composite provider takes its zero order value. So with just a simple click, you could answer the question to business from which source the value comes from and how it is processed throughout the data flow. Okay, let me show you how impact analysis in DocuPerformer can look like. Imagine, for example, the case that you are responsible for a certain change on a DSO. And you would like to understand what impact this change has on other objects. For sure, you all are familiar with the where used analysis, which the SAP is providing in the standard. But this is, for example, not considering the usage of the DSO tables in some coding. DocuPerformer, however, is able to do so. Let me show you how this works. So let's say we are planning to change this ADSO HAP0003. And now we would like to understand where the tables of these DSOs are used in coding somewhere. Therefore, I use my analysis context menu and I start the where used analysis. 
Here I have the option to check the usage in ABAP coding, meaning Doki Performer is scanning all coding of your SAP BW and is checking if there are some tables of this DSO called somewhere. We can see, okay, a direct usage in SAP BW objects might not be the case here, but in coding, I can see two transformations which have actual coding in the routines and which are accessing the tables of this DSO. To get detailed information about the coding, I can even select show source code. And here I can see that the, there is one table of the DSO used in the coding. Okay. Let me show you how this works across systems. Let's for example say we are obligated to change a query and we would like to understand which BO objects are depending on this query and might be evaluated after the change of the query. Therefore, I search for my query, which I would like to analyze. And now I execute the where used analysis one more time. And now I select the option that I want to consider BO objects from Design Studio, Analysis for Office, Lumira, and Webby. And I start my analysis. Quickly, Doki Performer lists me all the objects depending on this query, even on BW side, but also on BO side. So I get a list of all Design Studio, Lumira objects, Analysis for Office objects, which are depending on this query and might need to be re-evaluated after the change of the query. Okay, a similar functionality is the functionality matrix of usage info provider object in queries. Imagine, for example, you want to reduce an info provider by one field and you would like to make sure that no query is impacted by this change. What you can do is you can use Docker Performer to start this analysis. Then you execute this analysis function for a certain info provider, which you would like to analyze. Let's, for example, take our multi-provider from before. I can now select this entity and it's first of all listing me all queries based on this object. And now I can select which queries I would like to compare here. I start the analysis and Docu Performer is creating an Excel document which is showing me which fields, dimensions, key figures of this multi-provider are used in which query. So here on the left side in column A and B, you have all dimensions and key figures of the multi-provider. In the columns D, E, F, you now have the queries which I previously selected. And in the matrix itself, I have an entry as soon as a dimension or key figure is used by a query. For example, in, in line six, you can see that query uh, with this technical name is using the dimension zero BBP CTC ID as a, in the columns. All queries seem to be using zero BBP pot as a free characteristics. But you can also see that some info objects are not used at all by these three queries. If we would like to plan, for example, to remove zero BBP vendor from the multi-provider, we would certainly know that these three queries are not affected by this change. Okay, one more time back to the presentation. Housekeeping. Let's talk about housekeeping for a while. So over time, SAP systems tend to get messy in terms of redundant and unused objects. This can have a negative impact on performance and storage of your system. Thus, there is occasionally the need to clean up the system. And from our customers, we know that this is a quite time consuming and annoying task. And if you don't have the proper tools, it's even more time consuming. Docu Performer luckily supports you in these tasks by providing analysis functions which help you to determine these redundant and useless objects. So it's first of all about identifying unneeded entities, then check if they are used anywhere. And once you are sure and you've finished your analysis, you can decide if you want to remove these objects from the systems or you can even use the results for documentation purposes. Okay, let me show you how these functionalities work in DocuPerformer. First of all, I would like to show you the analysis function data loads and usages. 
This functionality shows you, for example, for queries, at what time they were last used. This might be an indicator which queries are getting useless in the system. Let me execute, for example, this functionality for this bunch of queries. Let's start the analysis. Now you can see that quite fast, DocuPerformer delivered me a list of all these queries with their date of the last usage of a user. Here you can see that most of the queries were used last time in 2019. However, there are some which were last used in 2017. And this might be an indicator that this query is not really used by business users, end users anymore. So why not evaluate if this can actually be removed from BW? The same analysis can of course be executed for info providers. And here you can even analyze when the last time the data was updated in the info providers. Okay. Um, another analysis which is, which is supporting you in housekeeping is the analysis list info provider without uh, usage and data flows. So are there info providers in my system which are actually not used anywhere in data flows or data models? DocuPerformer is analyzing all the objects and is preparing you a list of all objects with their object type and confirming to you that these objects are not used anywhere in data models. So these should be reconsidered if they are actually needed in the system or if they can be removed. Okay, let's continue. Often it's also quite convenient to know what inactive entities are in your system. Imagine for example your productive system. Inactive objects are always a risk to the daily business. So whenever objects are inactive, certain processes are not running fluently anymore. So you have an interest of getting an overview what objects are actually inactive in your system and therefore providing information to the developers, which then can take action to activate these objects again. Also for this functionality, DocuPerformer doesn't really take a long time. Here you can see the results are already prepared in a list and again you can filter these lists by object type, by technical name and so on. And even by the last user who changed the object. So you have immediately someone you can address to activate the object again. Okay, one last housekeeping functionality I would like to show you is the functionality show entities with identical technical name. This analysis is providing you objects which have actually the same identical name. This can happen, for example, for queries and query elements. Imagine, for example, that someone was creating a query straight in the productive system because he didn't want to go the proper way from development system through test system into the productive system. And later on, the same object is created in the development system and transported to the productive system. Then the technical name of these two queries is identical, however, the UID is different. To get an insight of this in straight in the SAP system is quite hard. With DocuPerformer, just one click is giving you a list of all these cases uh, which are messing up your system. Okay. So this was the last housekeeping functionality. And this is it about our webinar today. That's it from my side. I would like to thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye-bye.